a.m. to tell you that I love the way your nose wrinkles when you laugh. I call you to tell you you're my emergency contact, and I'm sorry if that scares you, but I think it's really sweet, and also I need to make sure you can fulfill these duties. You call me little weirdo. It doesn't hurt my feelings, though, because I know it's true. Like how you say I always give you puppy dog eyes after I've done something horribly dramatic. It's not melodrama, it's strategy. And I can't help it if my eyes remind you of puppies, even if it calls to mind the way they shit all over everything when they get really excited. I do that sometimes, sorry. You make me so excited. You're like eating peanut butter toast at 3 a.m. in bed, except even sexier. When I get to taste you in my bed at 3 a.m., I don't mind that there's little morsels of you left all over my sheets. I'll save them for later. I know, I kiss you like I'm searching for cotton candy in your throat. I could just climb in there and wait for it to melt all over me. Your sweetness stuck in my teeth and left me smiling for days. After that morning, you climbed out of my bed so softly so as not to wake me, and you tiptoed into the kitchen so you could fart and I wouldn't hear you. I was awake, so I heard you, but it's cool. Everyone says the farts of the person they love are the cutest thing ever. They're all lying, that's impossible, but your farts really are the cutest thing ever. And I swear, I can hear them crying a little because they have to leave their sweet home inside your body. I know how they feel. In my next life, I want to be an organ of yours so I can live somewhere in between your heart and the other parts of you I never want to have to crawl out of. I could be your kidneys or your spleen. When I was in the hospital because my spleen was so enlarged, the doctor said it could be a result of one of my other organs being in overdrive, and I said, in all seriousness, my heart has grown about four times larger lately because there's this human who planted honeysuckle in my ventricles and then watered it with sunbeams, so it's growing so fast I can barely keep track of who I was without them and for another. I know it's not technically an organ, but my sex life has gone into overdrive lately, Doc, and maybe that's it. She said that's probably not it. I probably ha just have esophageal reflux disease, which is not as exciting, but fine with me, because when I told you that, you said, poor thing, took me to the ice cream shop, and then we boned all night like esophageal reflux disease might kill me by morning. You made me so hot that night, I thought the fire on your lips might kill me by morning. Your mouth always tastes like cinnamon hearts. I've decided never to ask why so I can go on believing it's magic, just like I never ask why I always find sparkles all over all our sex toys. You're like a unicorn, except I don't have to brush your mane, but I get to ride you all night through the stars while they cheer for us. I have never done anything before that was worthy of the stars' applause, but I notice that when I'm with you, they tip their hats to me and they wink at me. I think I'm good at you. Even if I'm not, the way you look at me makes me feel like I am. I don't want a good job. I just want your lips all up on my face like a cephalopod. Sometimes suckers itself to a scuba diver's mask. That's right. You're like peanut butter toast and a cephalopod. You said it's my poems that make you melt, but I'm starting to have doubts about that. I'm thinking maybe it's my hot bod or my smooth talk. And if not that, maybe it's the way we fit together like pork and apples. I'll be the pork because you're the apple of my eye. I don't know why I say shit like that. I rescind that statement. I rescind that statement. You're more like the apple that fell on Newton's head. Kind of painful when you dropped into my heart, but you made me realize how fucking awesome gravity is because you made me fall so deep into you, I suddenly found myself spelunking in your entire being.